Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandro from AlphaNurseGuy.com. This is NCLEX Peer Review Lesson 22. We're going to be doing acidosis and alkalosis questions. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. Links will be in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. A client has the following laboratory values, a pH of 7.55, an HCO3 level of 22 millimeters of mercury, and a PCO2 of 30 millimeters of mercury. Which action should the nurse take? A. Perform Allen's test. B. Prepare the client for dialysis. C. Administer insulin as prescribed. D. Encourage the client to slow down breathing. The correct answer is D. Encourage the client to slow down breathing. Rationale. The client is in respiratory alkalosis, based on the laboratory results of a high pH and a low PCO2 level. Interventions for respiratory alkalosis are the voluntary holding of breath or slowed breathing and the rebreathing of exhaled CO2 by methods such as using a paper bag or a rebreathing mask as prescribed. Performing Allen's test would be incorrect because the blood specimen has already been drawn and the laboratory results have been completed. Dialysis and insulin administration are interventions for metabolic acidosis. Question 2. The nurse is told that the blood gas results indicate a pH of 7.50 and a PCO2 of 32 mm of mercury. The nurse determines that these results are indicative of which acid-base disturbance? A. Metabolic acidosis. B. Metabolic alkalosis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. The correct answer is D. Respiratory alkalosis. Rationale, the normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. In a respiratory condition, an opposite relationship will be seen between the pH and the PCO2 as is seen in the correct option. In an alkalotic condition, the pH is increased. In an acidotic condition, the pH is decreased, so both metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis can be eliminated. Metabolic alkalosis can also be eliminated because both pH and HCO3 are increased above normal values in this condition. Question 3. The nurse is caring for a client with a nasogastric tube that is attached to low suction. The nurse monitors the client closely for which acid-base disorder that is most likely to occur in this situation. A. Metabolic acidosis. B. Metabolic alkalosis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. The correct answer is B. Metabolic alkalosis. Rationale, the loss of gastric fluid via nasogastric suction or vomiting, causes a metabolic condition. This also results in an alkalotic condition due to the loss of hydrochloric acid through gastrointestinal fluid losses. Also, the options denoting a respiratory problem, respiratory acidosis, and respiratory alkalosis can be easily eliminated. Question 4. The nurse is caring for a client with severe diarrhea. The nurse monitors the client closely understanding that this client is at risk for developing which acid-base disorder? A. Metabolic acidosis. B. Metabolic alkalosis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. The correct answer is A. Metabolic acidosis. Rationale, intestinal secretions high in bicarbonate, may be lost through enteric drainage tubes and ileostomy or diarrhea. The decreased bicarbonate level creates the actual base deficit of metabolic acidosis. The remaining options are unlikely to occur in a client with severe diarrhea. Question 5. The nurse is caring for a client with diabetic ketoacidosis and observes that the client is experiencing abnormally deep, regular, rapid respirations. How should the nurse correctly document this observation in the medical record? A. Apnea observed. B. Bradynea noted. 
C. Cheney Stokes demonstrated. D. Kuzmal's respirations observed. The correct answer is D. Kuzmal's respirations observed. Rationale, abnormally deep, regular, and rapid respirations observed in the client with diabetic ketoacidosis are documented as Kuzmal's respirations. In apnea, respirations cease for several seconds. In bradynia, respirations are regular but abnormally slow. Cheney Stokes respirations gradually become more shallow and are followed by periods of apnea with repetition of the pattern. Question 6. The nurse is caring for a client with a diagnosis of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The nurse should monitor the client for which acid base imbalance. A. Metabolic acidosis. B. Metabolic alkalosis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. The correct answer is C. Respiratory acidosis. Rationale Respiratory acidosis most often occurs as a result of primary defects in the function of the lungs or changes in normal respiratory patterns from secondary problems. Chronic respiratory acidosis is most commonly caused by COPD. Acute respiratory acidosis also occurs in clients with COPD when superimposed respiratory infection or concurrent respiratory disease increases the work of breathing. The remaining options are not likely to occur unless other conditions complicate the COPD. Question 7. When caring for the following group of clients, who does the nurse determine is at risk for development of metabolic alkalosis? Select all that apply. A. Client with emphysema. B. Client who is hyperventilating. C. Client with chronic kidney disease. D. Client who has been vomiting for two days. E. Client receiving furosemide 40 mg daily. F. Client admitted with acetylsalicylic acid overdose. The correct answer is D. Client who has been vomiting for two days, and E. Client receiving furosemide 40 mg daily. Rationale Metabolic alkalosis is caused by any condition that creates the acid base imbalance through either an increase in bases or a deficit of acids such as the client who has been vomiting for two days and the client receiving furosemide daily. Recall that clients with emphysema and hyperventilation are at risk for a respiratory acid-base disturbance. Chronic kidney disease and aspirin overdose will result in metabolic acidosis. Question 8. The nurse is caring for a client with respiratory insufficiency. The arterial blood gas results indicate a pH of 7.50 and a PCO2 of 30 mm of mercury, and the nurse is told that the client is experiencing respiratory alkalosis. Which additional laboratory value should the nurse expect to note? A. A sodium level of 145 milliequivalents per liter. B. A potassium level of 3.2 milliequivalents per liter. C. A magnesium level of 2.4 mg per deciliter. D. A phosphorus level of 4.0 mg per deciliter. The correct answer is B. A potassium level of 3.2 milliequivalents per liter. Rationale Signs slash symptoms of respiratory alkalosis include tachypnea, mental status changes, dizziness, pallor around the mouth, spasms of the muscles of the hands, and hypokalemia. The remaining options identify normal laboratory results. Question 9. The charge nurse reviews the results of the arterial blood gases with the floor nurse and tells the floor nurse that the client is experiencing respiratory acidosis. The nurse should expect to note which on the laboratory result report. A. pH 7.50, PCO2 52 mm of mercury. B. pH 7.35, PCO2 40 mm of mercury. C. pH 7.25, PCO2 50 mm of mercury. D. pH 7.50, PCO2 30 mm of mercury. The correct answer is C. pH 7.25, 
PCO250 mm of mercury. Rationale, the normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45, and the normal PCO2 value is 35 to 45 mm of mercury. In respiratory acidosis, the pH is down, and the PCO2 is up. Therefore, the option with the pH of 7.25, and the PCO2 of 50 mm of mercury, is the only option that reflects an acidotic condition. Options with an elevated pH indicate an alkalotic condition. Option B identifies normal values for pH and PCO2. Question 10. The nurse reviews the arterial blood gas results of a client and notes that the results indicate a pH of 7.30, PCO2 of 52 mm of mercury, and HCO3 of 22 milliequivalents per liter. Which interpretation? Does the nurse correctly make about these results? A. Metabolic acidosis. B. Metabolic alkalosis. C. Respiratory acidosis. D. Respiratory alkalosis. The correct answer is C. Respiratory acidosis. Rationale Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. In a respiratory condition, an opposite effect will be seen between the pH and the PCO2. In this situation, the pH is low, and the PCO2 is increased. In an acidotic condition, the pH is decreased. Therefore, the values identified in the question indicate a respiratory acidosis. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.